Hi, Ollie. Um, Hi. What's the situation with the team news? Um, obviously, Marcus Rashford's one, but I'm particularly interested in hearing about. Yeah, they're... Uh... He obviously he had to come off the other day, and he's he's not trained fully today either. But uh, muted. oh, muted, uh, unmute. Hi, there we are. Yeah. No, Marcus uh, has been training this morning, not fully, but uh, he's joined in with the group. So uh, he obviously his shoulder um, stopped him uh, finishing the game. Uh, so. He's getting treatment, and uh, hopefully he'll uh, he'll be part of the squad that travels. So he's having treatment now after training. Anybody else that will be available or missing that's noteworthy? And also, is it going to be a bit weird playing in front of fans again? It'll be great playing in front of fans. We're looking forward to it. Of course, we we won't have our fans there, but we'll just have to use the energy or thrive off the home fans. Uh, and make them quiet, hopefully, that we can make them uh, edgy. So uh, we're uh, we're looking forward to. F I think it's the it's great to see fans uh, back in the stadium. Of course, we want it back at Old Trafford as well, and uh, hopefully we'll get that soon. Football is not the same; it's not been the same. So uh, great, and uh, uh, of course we're we're a bit bruised and disappointed after. Wednesday night, but um, hopefully we'll we'll be ready to go again to, uh, tomorrow. Bill Rice. Hi, Ollie. Um, you seem to have been struggling for consistency for a while now. You, you get great results in Europe, but not in the Premier League. You get great results in the Premier League and then a defeat in Europe midweek. I'm just wondering, why is it proving so hard for you to find that consistency, do you think? And, and how long do you think it might take to find it? <laughs> Depends on how many games do you want to go back. How uh, you know football is a game with uh, with human beings and they live their own lives. Uh, we played against some fantastic teams. Go 30 games back or 40 games back. I think we're one of the most consistent teams, performance-wise, uh, in the in the Premier League. So of course you're disappointed when you lose a game. I thought we played really well on Wednesday. So. Um, and some, it's fine margin at times that uh, decide a game if you if you win or you lose. So uh, the PSG game, the performance was miles better than say West Brom, for example. But we uh, you win against West Brom, but you don't get three points against PSG. So I think we're we're getting more and more um, less less um, bad performances, getting more and more consistent. The results you cannot. You can see. never. Sorry, you can never control the result in the end. That's uh, decided by uh, fine margins. Sorry, James Savundra. Ollie, if you win the game tomorrow, then Manchester United could find themselves in the top four after what's been a, a difficult start to the season, after the short turnaround time after last season. How much of a boost would that be? Of course, it would be for uh, for all sorts of reasons. Uh, we know that we've. We we've got a game less, of course. We've uh, we've, uh, but we'll get that back at at some point as well. So uh, and with the preseason uh, being as short as it was, to uh, to be able to move closer to the top would be a great achievement at this point. But it's a long season, and um, of of course we've showed some great consistency away from home lately. Uh, great results, and uh, hopefully we can continue that. James Cooper. Hi, Ollie. I, I don't think we've asked you this before, but I mean, David Moyes has, has done well. That's a new question. I've had many questions uh, or similar questions at, uh, in uh, three or four uh, things that we've uh, spoke about. So it'll be interesting to hear, hear your new one. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm just wondering if, if you, you know, he understands the scrutiny you're under. He understands the pressure of being Manchester United manager. I just wonder if that's something that you've discussed with him over the last kind of couple of years. No, I haven't uh, sat down and had discussions with uh, David. No, uh, of course, when you when you're here, it's uh, it's the biggest club in the world, and it's it's a different uh, different animal to anything else. So, uh, 
But uh, we've had other discussions and uh, I really admire David for what he's done in his career and you just see now as well uh, the way West Ham perform and the results they're getting. It shows uh, his qualities. Mandy Hemre. Hi Oli, I'm a bit late to proceeding so I'm not sure if you've been asked about team news yet, have you? No, uh, it's just, or yes, I've been asked, but uh, there's there's not much uh, to say. Marcus trained today, uh, not fully, but uh, he was part of the squad. So hopefully uh, with the treatment he's getting, uh, uh, he uh, he can travel. So uh, Luke's not ready yet. Uh, apart from that, we're, uh, we had the big squad uh, training again. And I know you've talked about the, the character and the impact that Bruno's had on the side. Cavani seems to be having a, a similar impact. How important is that experience in the squad when you've got such a young side? Yeah, it's, you know, last season we were the youngest team in the Premier League and we've been looking uh, at ways to improve the squad, either being young talent or experienced ones or, uh, uh, say, the likes of Bruno. So the last year with the, with the signings of Bruno and uh, Donny, Alex, with Edinson, the last one to come in, I think the balance in the squad has been, uh, been improved. And his experience, just one, his positioning, because he's a centre forward, he's a different type of centre forward. We can play a different way. And the other, the other bit is his experience in, in world football. He's been, he's, uh, he has come in and showed, shown the young lads how to uh, live your life and how to last uh, a long career. Last question in this section to Per Carlson. Yes, hello there. Hi. Uh, so, of course, I have to ask you about Norway's new national coach on a day like this. Uh, Stolle Solbakken uh, got the job yesterday. Uh, what do you think about the appointment and will he be a success and give the Norwegian supporters this group stage spot in the Euros or World Cup, which we have missed for 20 years now? I think Stolle is a great signing for the national team. I, he's a good friend of mine and of course it's probably the least hidden secret in uh, Norwegian football that he uh, eventually was going to take over the national team. So, uh, of course, I, f I feel Lars has moved the, the team in the right direction and hopefully Stolle can... Uh, take it one step further and that we can qualify. Uh, I'll uh, be having discussions with him, of course, and we've, we've been keeping in touch for the last few years anyway. So um, uh, it, it's, uh, it's a great signing. Uh, of course, you, you never like to see someone lose their job, because especially when, when they've done well. But uh, probably a chance for, for Norway that we, couldn't, that we couldn't say no to because the Stolle was available now. We've just got one more in this section for James Cooper. Very kind of you, John. Thank you. Yeah, you um, look like you wanted to follow up. <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to ask about two young players. Uh, Facundo Palestri came in and uh, asked you about his development, but also whether you've been kind of updated on whether Amar Diallo will join you in J January or not. Clearly, there's question marks about that. Yeah, uh, Facundo has come in, trained with the, with the first team, done, done well. We felt now it's time for him him to get game time, and he's played a couple of games in the reserves. He's uh, gradually settling in nicely, and he, he'll, he's getting more and more used to us. And um, Ahmad, he's started playing with uh, or come on a few times for Atalanta lately. He's a, he's a very exciting young boy and talent as well. So hopefully we uh, will get the the work permit, and uh, he'll be back with us in uh, or he, he'll be with us in January. So uh, a, a very, very exciting boy as well.